Hello, welcome to SimSip e-learning series. In this e-learning session, I will take you through a SimSip workflow in version 21. So, let's go to SimSip. Here we are. Starting with version 21, three buttons and three tools have been made available here, and one of them is workflow. So we will focus on workflow. Here is the main screen of workflow. It is a set of tasks which allow you to change population in a set of workspaces automatically, or change some parameter values automatically, again in a set of workspaces, or change model options, and finally, run workspaces automatically. Setting up tasks in workflow may be a bit easier and has some aspects which are more flexible than running batch simulation. Let's see how to change population in workflow. So I select change population and click on next. This is a screen that is shared by the various tasks. It allows you to select an input folder and an output folder. In the input folder, you should place workspaces to be modified or run. The results will be placed in the output folder. I need to place workspaces in a folder here, so let me do that. I set up a demonstration project on my disk. We could use a project tool to do exactly the same thing, but I will do it on disk. I will select two workspaces and copy them in the two process subfolder. Here they are. Then I go back to my workflow screen and I will select this folder has the input folder. The software detected that two workspaces are available for processing in this input folder. For output folder, I will not use the same folder. I will tell it to use this processed subfolder, which is now empty. I could have selected to use the same folder. However, in this case, the risk would be to replace the files created by the newly created file. If you select to use the same folder for both input and output, then you have to modify the workspace file name with a prefix or a suffix that you can add, or both. In this case, I will choose not to modify these file names and I will put the results of the processing into this different folder. Then I click next. I go to a screen which allows me now to select which population files I will use to change the populations which are in the different workspaces of the input folder. Deletions there will be all replaced by this new choice. So I will choose to use same Chinese population. I can also use this selection button to go to my demo project and use, for example, the Japanese population that is in my project. Select it. This will replace a single population, the default population, in my workspaces, all of them, by this new population, my sim Japanese. If my input workspaces use multiple populations, I can change them using this button and this screen. I will change, for example, multiple population 1 by Chinese pediatric. I can change the other population also, but I have to use always the same 
replacement population for each of them. Let's go back to changing a single population. Then I click next. I get this screen that allows me to basically process the changes. I click run and I will see how the process is running, changing workspace one, changing workspace two, and I get an output which informs me whether or not the change has been successful or what the error were. And that is it. I can basically exit the tool. Let's see how to change model options. To change model option, I just click on this button. I go to the next screen. I get the uh, screen which allows me to select input and output folder. So I will again select the two process folder. It's good. It is already pre-selected. It contains two workspaces. And then I will put the result of the changes, the output, into the process folder, already pre-selected. But I will modify the file name of the result workspaces. I'm not putting a prefix, but I will use a suffix, like A, for example. And then I click on the next screen. I get to this which allows me to change options for substrate. Inhibitor 1 is there as inhibitor 1, inhibitor 2 or inhibitor 3, and trial design options. For substrate, inhibitor 1, inhibitor 2 or 3, I can click modify substrate, and then I can change blood binding option or absorption options. It is the same for inhibitor 1, if I have one. Same for inhibitor 2. Same for inhibitor 3. If I click on changing trial design, I can change whether or not I'm using a population representative or a virtual population. And if a virtual population, I can change the number of trials and the number of subjects per trial. Let's change the number of trials in each of my workspaces. I will have 20 trials. Substrate, I can modify the substrate and change some options of blood binding, changing the blood to plasma partition coefficient to user input predicted, for example, change the hematocrit reference values, the fraction unbound in plasma, user input predicted, and the main plasma protein binding. If I Choose change option for absorption. I can change QGUT to user input predicted, PEF again to user input predicted, FUGUT, the ADAM model. I can use the UBL fluid volumes, and if I'm using ADAM or MADAM, I can change the volume emission type and the transit time model. I will focus for now just on changing the trial design. Click next and run to process the changes. Processing one workspace after the other automatically. Both of them have been changed successfully. I can exit the tool. Let's look at what was created. Here is project view, I processed those two workspaces, and these are the results. The same names, but appended with underscore A, and we can see the difference. I open the workspace, the main simulator, this is the original workspace. Ten trials. If I look in the process folder and open this workspace in the main simulator, I now have 
20 trials per simulation. Now, how do we change parameters using the workflow? This first requires selecting parameters a bit like you select parameters for parameter estimation or sensitivity analysis in the main screen of the simulator. So let's go to the project manager and we want to change one or several parameters in those workspaces. I first open the workspace, any one of them. In the main window of the simulator, I would go, for example, to substrate, physical chemical properties, and select one or several parameters for change. How do I do that? I right click on the box. I do not need to change the value here, but I select workflow which means that I will be able to change the parameter values in the workflow here. Let's select this parameter. Let's select the PK one also. Workflow. So you see the yellow triangle appearing. I will go to trial design and I will also select number of subjects in each trial for change in the workflow. Many, many parameters can be changed this way, not all of them. For example, minimum age or maximum age is not a parameter you can change in the workflow. Um, and therefore, the possibility to change it doesn't appear here if you right click on the value. Then, when I have done that, I go back to the workflow screen. Now, click on change parameters. Get the usual screen of selection of input and output folders to process. Okay, I will select this folder. Two workspaces are in it. Processed. I will select this folder. I will change not the prefix, but the suffix, the B. And I get to the next screen. I see a list here. Of the parameters that I have selected and that I can change. Um, my log POW was three. Let's change it to four, for example. My PK value was 2.4. Let's make it 2.7. This will be done in all the workspaces on which it will operate. And the number of subjects in the trial, I will change. 20, I can reset to default values if I want. And then I click next and I'm ready to process the changes. All the workspaces in the folder will be modified accordingly. Okay, last workspace, second workspace, all change successfully. I am done. If I go to my project folder, I can now see that in the processed subfolder, those workspaces appear. Let's open one of them, check that a change has been done. Substrate, change to 4, 2.7, trial design, 20 subject per trial. This has been done for all the workspaces that were in the two process. So we have changed an option in those two workspaces and we have changed parameter values in those two workspaces. Now, what if we want to run all those workspaces? Let's do that. Go to workflow, click run workspaces. Now, those workspaces I want to run are in the process subfolder. I select subfolder. And then the output folder. I will use the same folder. And I will output to databases. I do not get to change or add a prefix or a suffix because the name will be unique. I could also add the option of outputting to Microsoft Excel, but it takes longer. I will just output to database, click next, and now I will run the changes for all the workspaces. It reads the workspace. It's 
second workspace. And I am done. Workspaces have been run. I can exit the tool. Thank you for your attention.